So good evening, everybody. It's so good to see everybody back and some new faces. I'm delighted. So this evening, we start a whole new series. And this is a series that is, I am calling actually a fireside chat. Um, it's neither academic and nor is it practice, nor is it uh, specifically a book group. And yet at the same time, our conversations for the next months will be based on a book that Adzim Pelu Rinpoche had asked us to read almost 20 years ago. And it's called A Marvelous Garland of Rare Gems, Biographies of Masters of Awareness in the Dzogchen Lineage. It's by Nia Kempo, and actually it's translated by Chukinima Richard Barron, who is an amazing translator. So we've all been blessed with this book. I'm not quite sure if we can see this. And... It's not a requirement to buy the book. Of course, it would be something for a library and very beneficial. But for our conversations, um, there are no requirements. It's just coming together. So in terms of this book, A Marvelous Garland of Rare Gems, the biographies of masters of awareness of the Dzogchen lineage, I'm going to start this evening talking about Longcheng Rabdram, Longchengpa. And for those who have done the series on, on uh, Longcheng Ningtig Ninjo, um, perhaps this name is becoming a little bit familiar. So I will take a step, um, not exactly backwards, shall we say forwards, and looking into for a moment, the book, Words of My Perfect Teacher, that we've studied uh, quite extensively in terms of the Wangqing Ning Tig Nindra practice. And in the Words of My Perfect Teacher by Patrol Rinpoche, there is a picture of Wang Chengpa, Wang Cheng Rabjam, who lived from 1308 to 1363. And in that book, under his photo, it says, the most brilliant teacher of the Nyingma lineage, Longcheng Rabjam gathered together the heart essence teachings of Padmasambhava, Vimala Mitra, and Yeshe Sogyal. He transmitted all of these teachings to Jigme Lingpa in a series of visions known as the heart essence of the vast expanse. So this heart essence of the vast expanse actually links to Longcheng Rabjam's name. And it was Taisitu who gave him the name, which is the title in the book, which is Longchem Jampa. And it's a little bit more extensive. Yeah, Longcheng Rabjampa, master of vast array of the supreme expanse. As a name, that's his name. And Padmasambhava, through vision, gave him the name Drime Ozer. And sometimes we, we see that name. And that means stainless rays of light. So here we are talking about not just a teacher, um, but somebody really quite extraordinary. And for those of you who have read the long chapter on Long Cheng Rob Jam, it is almost overwhelming. And I don't like to use that word because we don't want to be overwhelmed, but rather inspired. Um, he was born in a very fortunate way because his father and his grandfather were both Buddhist scholars and Buddhist practitioners. So he was born into a family that would support what 
he was to become. And it is said that at conception, his mother saw a lion and the lion had a swirl of light at its third eye and put it into uh, his mother-to-be and she felt it go through her body and she knew something extraordinary was going to happen. It's said that he could read and write at the age of five and he began to study with his father, again, who was a scholar and practitioner at the age of seven. And it was very clearly stated that from the very beginning, he was able to explain things very clearly. And this clarity is something that we all are benefiting from today. And there was a very beautiful passage in the chapter on uh, Lung Cheng Rab Jam that just said that every, all of the Dzogchen teachings we have today, we point right back to Lung Chengpa. And why is that? Because in Tibet, there were many teachings, and even Padmasambhava was doing practices. We've heard the word Kurokuli, the red Tara. Um, had, he had gotten the Kala Chakra. I think people are familiar with the Kala Chakra, um, given by His Holiness the Dalai Lama um, a number of times in Bodh Gaya, in New York, and other places. And so there were numerous practices that were coming into Tibet. Um, it said that when Long Chengpo was born, there was a very wrathful goddess who proclaimed that she would watch over him. And so um, with this fortunate birth was also this protection. And so as he grew at the age of, I think, 11, he took ordination. And with each of these steps in his life, he had different names. He had a birth name, he had an ordination name, and then eventually the name of Langcheng Rabjam and Jimmy Ozer. So sometimes we see those names together. And then for the chapter heading, um, actually it was the first time I'd seen the Langcheng Rabjampa uh, as part of that name. So it is all the same person. And let's look back at uh, Langchengpa's previous, previous life. So a couple of lifetimes before, um, he was actually the daughter of King Trison Detsu. And this daughter was with King Trison Detsu, her mother, and Padmasambhava, and she died at the age of eight. And the king was just distraught. And so Padmasambhava said, I will re revive your daughter, and then I am going to place um, a terma which are teachings to be revealed at a later time. And so it's said that Padmasambhava put um, a nuri um, within the mind of Pemasel, which was the um, little girl, and that she would be the holder of some of the Ningtik teachings. And she was reborn one time before uh, Long Shrenpa and gave some of those teachings. I believe it might have been the Khandra Nitik, and then was reborn as uh, the one we know now as Long Cheng Rabjam. So within the whole mind stream of Long Chengpa were some of the Ningtik teachings. And then what Long Chengpa is most known for is that he was so smart and he went to study. Um, he studied with the third Karmapa and he studied with a teacher named Ridzen Kumazara. And that teacher um, was one of the more extraordinary teachers of the time and instilled with him um, not only teachings, but said that he would be the holder of his, of the Dzogchen, of the Dzogchen teachings. So that was predicted. And then he also would call uh, Lang Chengpa uh, the scholar from Samye because Samye being the first monastery in Tibet and also 
um, and we'll get to this, Long Chengpa spent time at Sami Chimpuk. And in the text, that is referred to as the Chimpuk upper lands. And so that, that is uh, Samye Chimpuk, which means that it's above Samye in this area uh, called Chimpuk. And I personally know it well um, because that is the place that I first met Azam Pelu and in, in Tibet. So uh, Lang Chengpa spent a lot of time there, and then that's what, the way his teacher referred to him, the scholar from Samye. And I share this because a lot of times people hear the word Zogchen, and it's not always connected to scholarship, learning, and yet Lang Chengpa, the one who really brought the Dzogchen teachings all together. As a matter of fact, he's considered the person who codified all of the teachings that were known at that time. And the text is very, um, and again, these words I don't like using, but it's dense with everyone he studied with, the text that he studied, and not only that, but he would have deities helping him. He had Saraswati, who is the goddess of knowledge and music and art and wisdom. And she was guiding him. And then another time when he did learn to give empowerments and teachings, the um, deities who held those teachings would enter the bodies of the disciples and tell him exactly how to pronounce each word. So he was guided all of the time. And it's said that he was given the Dzogchen, Dzogchen transmissions and the Ningtig transmissions from the Daikinis. And the Daikinis were, of course, the protectors and held those teachings. So his one would look at his life and it was interwoven with um, even Ekazate, who is a protector for Dzogchen, would be teaching him, would be protecting him. And so he would sometimes be in touch with Saraswati, sometimes Ekazate, sometimes the Dakinis, an appearance by Yeshe Sogyal, um, Padmasambhava. And then at the same time, he would have, you know, Ridzen Kumud. Kumar Zara is his teacher, and the third Karmapa, and then he had other wonderful teachers. Uh, he also, after learning and scholarship, he went and lived in a very rugged way. Uh, he went into the hills. At one point, I think he was in a cave for eight straight months and kept it dark, and he did practice, and he just had um, one bag, a large bag of barley, which he had, it said, earned um, from doing a ceremony. And then at one point he was so poor that uh, monks wanted him to make barley offerings so he could study with his teacher and he didn't even have enough barley. But his teacher said, oh, I will pay for your teachings. And so he was protected in that way. But he felt like it was important to go off and to practice on one's own. He also went to Lhasa. And when he was in Lhasa, he went and saw the statue, which perhaps some people have been in the center of Lhasa. It's called the Jowa uh, statue. And then, of course, the Jowa statue began uh, to radiate light, uh, which he poured into Long Chengpa. And so it's almost like wherever he went, he would receive these incredible blessings um, to the point where his own realization, it did, it did go beyond words. You know, a lot of people are attracted to the Dzogchen. They go, well, it's beyond words. It's beyond meditation. It's beyond practice. But when we read about the life of Lung Chengpa, it's actually full of study and it's full of practice and it's full of retreat. And it starts with the very basics of ordination. He, when he was very young, he wrote about the Vinaya, which are the rules of the monks. And then, of course, when he came into his later years, when he was compiling um, all of the Ningtig 
uh, transmissions, I think there were 17, and in one of them, he compiled the Ningtig Yabzi, and that was, I believe, 13 of the Ningtig teachings. And I n know that one because I took the uh, Ningtig Yabzi, oh, many, many years ago, Oh, the one time that Chattatuka Rinpoche gave it at Ridzen Ling in California for um, about a month. So I was there for about a month and it went from morning to night and Chucky, Chucky Nima, Richard Barron was the translator, the one who translated um, A Marvelous Garland of Rare Gems and also the person who translated um, the Seven Treasuries. And perhaps some of you have heard of The Seven Treasuries. It was really a pivotal work of Long Chengpa's. Uh, this one that I'm holding in my hand, it's from Pab Padma Publishing. Again, Shuki Richard Barron translated it. This one is called A Treasure Trove of Scrip Scriptural Transmissions, The Precious Treasury of the Basic Space of Phenomenon. So although Lung Cheng Rabjan began as a monk, he was by the end of his life, having gathered all of the Ningtig, all of the Dzogchen teachings, codifying them. And that's what he is most known for. He gathered, I mean, he had the brilliance and the scholarship and the wisdom and the clarity and the clarity to communicate, to gather all of these known uh, teachings and transmissions and put them primarily into the seven treasuries. And those um, have mostly been translated. Um, some of them, I believe, have not been translated. And some of us have done the Finding Rest series. This one is Finding Rest and Illusion. And again, by Long Chengpa. This publisher is Shambhala. And the other publisher for The Seven Treasuries is Padma Publishing um, on Tibetan Treasures. So those are all available. Um, the Finding Rest and Illusion, some of us did the practice with Adzim Gyalse Rinpoche. And then other, other times when he came to Portland, he also gave uh, the other ones of the Finding Rest. So we have Long Chengpa coming up in our practices that some of us have done. And those who maybe have never even heard the word Long Chengpa, hopefully can become inspired to find somebody who did scholarship, very deep practice, renunciation. And there's literally 14 pages of all of the teachings that he gave. So some of the chapter... Um, in the uh, Garland of Rare Gems is actually a list of, of, of what he taught. And it came to the point where some people, I believe, have heard this one phrase, but I want to expand on the phrase um, of what he wrote later in his life when he was writing more about Dzogchen. So one part of this book um, after it goes through a lot of his personal history and his training and his, and his teachings. There's also some, a part of the book called Long Chengpa's Secret Biography, Enlightened Mind. And this is what we know many people are attracted to. And so in this book, he, he writes, or he says, um, in his work, The Pre Precious Treasury, and this is one of the treasuries, of sublime spiritual approach, he states, Longchenpa states, if I look at my experience, this unique state in which my ordinary consciousness has fallen away, I for whom phenomena have resolved burst out laughing. Since I have already gained the ongoing state that is the true nature of phenomenon about which nothing need be done, I am free of the narrow confines of dualistic perceptions of hope and fear. 
it is all right if I meditate, but it is also all right if I must leave things as they are. So this is when we get into the depth of Dzogchen teachings. And again, I want to premise that with his depth of training um, with a long list of teachers in retreat. So I mentioned uh, Samye Chimpuk which is a very special place for me. And it's also where there is a stupa for um, a pillar, really, um, which is where um, he, his remains, some of his remains became relics, but where other of his remains were um, put in the ground. And so there's a pillar that denotes that. And when I first went to Samye Chimpuk, uh, some of you already know the story. I was on a pilgrimage and I, I, I just had barely known the name Long Cheng Rabjam, but I was on a pilgrimage um, walking in the footsteps of Padmasambhava, Yeshe Sogyal, Long Cheng Rabjam, and Jigme Lingpa. And so we were going to some of the holy places in Tibet where they lived, where they taught. And so then when we were crossing the Yarlung Songpo River, there were some people who were wearing little buttons and those buttons had a picture of a monk. And so we were going to Samye and then we were going to camp just at the foot of Samye Chimpuk. And so then uh, we walked up the mountain to meet for the very first time Azam Pelu Rinpoche, who is the incarnation of Jigme Lingpa and, of course, holds the teachings of Longcheng Rabjam. So, uh, Samye Chimpuk, uh, where we stayed for several days and then received teachings right where Longchengpa had both practiced and where Longchengpa had taught. So um, that was incredible. And so when we read the chapter uh, in the Precious Garland, we'll and perhaps take a moment and see, oh, Chimpuk Uplands, that's Samye Chimpuk. That's that very beautiful clearing where you could see out into the vast expanse and understand why Lung Chengpa would uh, have that as part of his name. So Lang Chengpa was also trained by an emanation of Magic Love Drum, and some of you know about Should. And then he also taught at Shuksep Nunnery, and that was the seat of Magic Love Drum, and he taught the Ningtig teachings there. Shuksep was also a place that we went on our pilgrimage. And so he really came across the great teachings of, of the time and emanations or the actual teachers themselves. And again, it wasn't just um, him. He did have what's called termas, which were there were some buried, um, uh, it's called revealed treasures and some of them were at Chimpuk, and he did reveal them. Some were of what's called pith instructions, and there's also something called key points, and all of these are clarifications for Dzogchen teachings. He did also spend time in Bhutan, so there was a point where um, there, were, there was a little, con he didn't have just a, a smooth ride. You know, he had some conflicts with some of the other monks when he was at one of the monasteries and he left. And then also he had a vision that there was going to be some turmoil in Tibet. And so he went into exile in Bhutan and he set up several monasteries. One of them was Tarpa Ling. And I had the great good fortune to go there and um, also to walk on a very a steep hill above Tarpa Ling where uh, Long Cheng Rabjam practiced. And there's a, a tall statue that's hard to believe that it does not topple, but it is built on rocks. And it has a very beautiful, view of the mountains of Bhutan. 
And so when I was on pilgrimage um, two years ago with Adzum Gelsi and Brashe, we did go and we were able to practice there. And then we, we had tea and uh, conversation and met some of the monks who were there. So that was very powerful because we did praises to Lung Chengpa. And Lung Chengpa, when, you know, when he was passing away, I think he lived only 58 years, which if you're young seems like a long time. And if you're old seems like, oh my goodness, he, he died a little bit young. Um, but when he was dying, he told his disciple not to worry about him. He was very happy and for them to just pray to him. And this is very common in Tibetan Buddhism. And just like in his own life, when he was trained some of the times by human teachers, some of the times by dakinis who would, who would arise, some of the times by protectresses like as Ekazati, some of the times um, Saraswati and so forth, um, that we too have that opportunity where we can pray to Longchenpa and just like his disciples uh, did and do, and to bring in that energy. And I think some of us from doing the um, ninjo practice, the Long Ching Ning Ting Ninjo, are feeling some of those blessings uh, that are coming through. So it's very beautiful to read this um, chapter. I had to read it a few times to be really straightforward because it was just jam-packed. I think that's a better word than dense, right? It was just jam-packed with teachers and deities and holy places and blessings. And, you know, just to keep them all straight, I was like, oh my goodness. Um, but I wanted to be able to um, you know, have this, what I'm calling the fireside chat, so that all of us could become a little more familiar with these teachers. And um, I know we'd mention, I'd mentioned Vimala Mitra, and I, I do want to mention him. And we'll also, of course, Jigme Lingfa, um, of which Azam Rinpoche is the incarnation, and also who 300 years after uh, Long Chengpa passed away, um, Jigme Lingpa prayed to Long Chengpa, just like Long Chengpa said. And then um, he, in our, our day and age, we might almost say he downloaded all of the teachings of Long Chengpa and then carried forth um, that lineage. So we're looking at Dzogchen. And it's probably also important to know that at the time, you know, they use this word Nyingma, but at the time, Things were not so, they were not so segmented. Even when I first went to Tibet, there were different traditions studying with different teachers, more in the form of what's called Rime. Rime is um, something that was brought back to life by Dilgo Kenze Rinpoche. It is the honoring of all traditions in their own right. Um, and then the recognition of them. And a lot of times the Dalai Lama will say he is Rime. Um, I say I'm Rime too. And so there was the equal recognition of the different traditions, even though, you know, there have been all kinds of conflicts, you know, early on in Tibet. I also took a moment to look up what was happening in the rest of the world, you know, 1308, what was happening? And what was so interesting is that in Europe, it was the time of the bubonic plague. And people were, it says that I think a quarter of the people alive in Europe died. So here on one part of the continent, we have a very unfortunate circumstance. And then in another part of the world, we have a very fortunate circumstance. And I say that because in terms of our coming together to study and talk about and learn about Long Chengpa and to know these great teachings of the Ningtig and of Dzogchen, we are very fortunate. And so it does happen and we know it happens in other parts of the world not so fortunate. And so, as always, just as Long Chengpa did, 
we need to take advantage of our fortunate birth. You know, whatever faults we think we were raised with, um, right now we have this opportunity. So I'm really, really ecstatic. I mean, when I was thinking about um, presenting Wang Chengpa, I just became so happy. And also because in 2007, uh, Azam Hiller Breche, he, he read, and if you have the book, he read the whole, I think it's nine pages of all of the Dzogchen masters as a transmission for us, all of us, all of us, to read the book. And so I believe that the closer we get when we read in our practices, as we read the lineages, which is very classical, very traditional, then we, we know, we know who we're talking about. We feel a little bit closer. We go, oh yeah, Longsheng Ravjam, yes, he codified all of the teachings of Tibet, put them into the seven treasuries, and we're receiving them now. And if it wasn't for that, who knows? So we have a lot of gratitude that we give to uh, Longsheng Ravjam. It's said that he did have a number of disciples, and in one of the um, transmissions, he, some of the transmissions, it says, oh, he taught thousands of people. Another one, one of them up at Samya Chimpuk, he taught um, at one time eight people, another time 21 people. So it really depended um, when and where and what he was giving the transmissions for. And then sometimes he was teaching the Dakinis. So that he could do anywhere. And he was originally from, from the eastern part of central Tibet. So that's where he was born. And it's very interesting because now a lot of the, uh, what's called Nyingma, and a lot of the Dzogchen teachings are actually um, upheld in monasteries in Kham. And the people in Kham, Although when we look at a map, we might consider that Tibet, but the people in Kham actually never considered themselves as part of Tibet. And even when I met Azam Rinpoche at Samyin Chimpuk, you know, he was from Kham and he had actually traveled 1400 miles to arrive during Sagarawa at Samyin Chimpuk. Um, and he said that um, he was coming into Tibet which means that he wasn't in Tibet before. So that conjuncture um, was quite remarkable because he was coming from Kham to Sami Chimpuk, uh, which is a holy place for Lung Chengpa. Okay, so the, a couple of the books that I mentioned, A Marvelous Garland of Rare Gems by Nia Sho Nyesho Kempo, who was a very great teacher, a very great Dzogchen master. Um, he was somebody who was imprisoned by the Chinese for a long time and actually lost his voice. Um, or he spoke in a whisper by the time he got out of the prison. So to have him, and I believe it was the Dalai Lama who asked him to um, put this together, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he was the one, and again, that was another gathering of all of the Dzogchen masters for us. And then a treasure trove of scriptural transmission by Longcheng Rabjam, part of the seven treasuries. And again, the seven treasuries um, has the Chouying Zhu, who some of the people are studying now. And um, those teachings are being are being given to those who have done or completed the um, uh, the nindro, the Lung Ching Ning Ting nindro. And that's another important thing to say. Um, one of the reasons I'm not going to go so heavily into the Dzogchen is that traditionally, and this is how uh, Azam Pelo uh teaches, is that one does the uh, Lung Ching Ning Ting Nindro and then does receive, start to receive of the higher teachings, the Dzogchen teachings, and the mind-to-mind -mind teachings. The mind-to-mind -mind teachings are when um, a master who can uh, see into the disciple, the, the student's mind, gives personalized teachings and also reveals 
uh, reveals the depth of the nature of mind. And so the Dzogchen teachings are about the nature of mind. And so that's why a lot of times in this paragraph that I read, you know, when everything falls away and Hong Jungpa bursts out laughing, um, that's after years of study, training, and uh, transmissions and blessings and purifications and pilgrimages and so forth. So there is a the end of the chapter in the book, in the Garland book, um, is more, uh, if you want to get some very deep ideas about Dzogchen, it's definitely in there. And then even for myself to go to the Ningtig Yabzi, uh, oh my goodness, it must be, it's more than 21 years ago, I also had um, to do the the Nunjo, and I, I will share this with you. I think I, I maybe I've shared it um, before, but I wanted to do the teachings for the, the Ningte Gyabzi. I was in a way n- newer to Tibetan teachings, even though, as many of you know, I have a deep background in the Theravada tradition, but I'd started studying with. Um, uh, Nam Kai Norbu and then uh, Chadak Tukar Rinpoche before I studied with Azam Pelo Rinpoche. And so I was doing the Dijam Teresar Nunja, but I wasn't finished. But um, somebody said, you need to do these teachings. And I was like, well, how can I do that? I'm not done. <laughs> and so they said, well, go talk to Chadak Tukar Rinpoche. So I very meekly uh, went into him and I said, well, I haven't finished, <laughs> but I want to do these teachings. And he said to me, oh, that's fine if you promise to become a Buddha in one lifetime. So I said, yes. And so, of course, I had to do my very best. And that's what I decided to do. And it's very interesting because when I was reading about Lang Changfa, even though Lang Changfa had studied so hard and he'd been to so many different teachers, um, when he was up at Sami Chimpuk, I don't know, for like the third or fourth or fifth time, he made a resolve to do even more, even better, um, go more deeply, and then to offer his teachings, you know, as best he could. And he sought a lot of guidance in that, you know, of which teachings to give. And, and even there were a couple of pages in the book which are pretty interesting to read because he even had doubt, you know, he's going like, is this, is this real? Do I really know this? And, you know, all of us faced that. And it was so fascinating to see, oh, Long Cheng Rob Trump had that thought, you know, um, am I there yet? <laughs> Is this really it? And then it was really these masters who said, yes, you know, you, you do, you have this. And so then he continued to, to teach uh, until he died. So that's a little bit of an introduction for people, for Long Cheng Rob Jam. And then, as I said, we're going to look into uh, the chapter just before is Vimala Mitra, and his name is mentioned quite a bit. And then uh, there's a couple of chapters after, which are some disciples of Long Cheng Rob Jam and then Jigme Lingpa. So I'm going to try to keep this aligned with some of the practices that some of the people are doing with the Lung Ching Ning Tig Nun Zhao. And so that when we read those names, we're like, oh yeah, okay, Lung Cheng Pa, oh, Dreame Ozir, oh yes, I know that that's Lung Cheng Pa, or Lung Cheng Rab Jam Pa. And I even just found out, oh, that's Lung Cheng Rab Jam, and Tai Situ gave him that name. So a lot of times, you know, again, we're learning a new culture as we're learning new practices. And so sometimes the names, and of course the names mean things like rays of light. So somebody's name being rays of light and then rays of light of the vast expanse. And all of these, again, are um, alluding to the Zogchen practices and the way that the mind transforms. So 
Um, I really liked this one paragraph and just sharing with you a few minutes ago where the mind is no longer dualistic. I mean, that's huge. And it's beyond hope and fear. That's huge. Um, even that is quite remarkable. So these are things that are beyond calm. You know, we've all learned calm, but this is really coming into the nature of mind. And I believe everyone on this broadcast is um, walking those steps, um, unveiling the nature of mind, coming more closely to our true nature. So coming to know a little bit more about uh, the scholar of Samye, who became Dreame Ozer, Stainless Rays of Light, is very important. It's very important for our own learning. When Azar Mabashe first came, and I believe I've shared this with people, he said, oh, everyone just wants Zogchen, Zogchen, Zogchen. And so he said they don't understand that there is a whole training. And so this is a whole training. And reading the chapter about Lung Cheng Rabjam really helped a lot to understand how involved that training is. We may never study everything that he studied, but again, he codified so that we can learn, which is extraordinary. Thank you. So this is where we complete and uh, we